Okay, uh, quick update on where we are. I think it's important when you do a project that you have an end game. My end game wasn't just to put an engine and make it run. I mean, that's not why I built the test stand. The whole point of the test stand was to, yes, of course, make the engine run and check it all out. But the real point was I eventually wanted to put it into the car. And in order to do that, I wanted to get all the uh, bugs worked out before I actually dropped it into the, to the engine compartment. The thing I don't like that really drives me nuts is when I see turbo engine swaps put into cars and then you see a spaghetti of wiring all over laying on top of the valve cover, up underneath the dash, or on the passenger side, around the back. It just, you know, it always seems like it's kind of, a, excuse my French, kind of a half-assed finished job. Maybe, maybe they're not finished, maybe they just get so excited when I show it. But to me, I'd rather have the wiring all worked out so that, you know, clearly there may be some changes, but it should be largely worked out before you even bother installing the engine. And test it, that's the other reason. I don't want to put it all in, do my wiring that I can't figure out, try to troubleshoot the issue with the engine installed in the car. Now, with that as the premise of this, I'll show you where we are today. I'm going to take you off the stand. Stand by. Okay. We'll start with the ECU, the heart of the, of the matter. This will mount in the stock location on a Z. This is your interior line. This is inside the, the driver's side footwell area. This also is in the same, on, the, on this driver's side on the uh, you know, the inside of the compartment, of the passenger compartment. This is your hookup to the uh, pin. This simulates here, this, these open wires. This socket here is installed in the car already. That's what currently drives the, the current computer, where it says IGN. This side here, which is what I made up, drives this wire harness. So basically my, my goal here was to make a wire harness that was uh, similar to the existing wire harness for a non-turbo engine, so I could just plug and play. So this will get plugged into the into the uh, plug that's this, and this plug literally resides right underneath the uh, the steering wheel. If I'm not mistaken. This gets plugged in there. This gets mounted. This is not used. That that has to do with the old turbos fuel pump management system that reduces voltage to the fuel pump for some ridiculous reason. I don't have any idea why. There's a module that goes along, not used. I'm not sure what this one goes to. I think this has to do with the other hookups, like this goes to a to the water temperature switch for turning on the uh, the um, that blower that cools off the turbo injectors. You know, the blower, and I could do all that kind of stuff. So this isn't used. I think it also has like the uh, temperature sensor for the gauge. I'm not going to use that. So this is this is an unused plug, and this is an unused plug. This is inside the passenger car, it plugs in, this plugs in the computer. The firewall plug will go right about here in the engine bay. So now we're inside the engine bay. This plug, this, this whole cable right here, okay, will wrap across the top of the engine. Because remember, we're basically, on this side is the um, driver's side of the engine. That line comes around, it'll go actually up around here along the, uh, you know, around the back side of the engine bay, and it comes out here, and there's two, there's two things going here, actually there's three things. This first lead goes to the cylinder head temperature sender and a knock sensor, so you've got one lead going up there. Then you also have an EFI relay and a pump relay, okay? Uh, Typically, these on the existing setup are installed in the engine on the inside compartment. It's a dual relay setup. I'm not using that at all. It's just it was just too much work to make that happen. So these two relay, relays will mount in the engine compartment over by where the uh, voltage regulator sits. It'll be underneath it, protected from the weather, so we should be okay here. So those two go there, and then the battery hookup is three fuse links. We have. A double fuse link here, and the green wire is for the fuel injector uh, positive lead. The brown 
fuse link here goes to the actual EFI unit itself. And this last brown unit, which I had to do, do some modification because it had the wrong in in on. But anyway, this last uh, fuse link is for the fuel pump. So you've got three fuse links for three different functions. And I've got them all connected directly at the battery with a single ring hook, ring, ring uh, terminal. And the idea there was I don't want to have a shared cable for these three because I don't want noise from clicking on and off injectors while it's somehow getting into the other circuit. The battery acts like a gigantic damper, so there won't be any, there won't be any, bols, uh, any pulsing going on at this point, okay? But if you had a long lead out here and then split, you could potentially get uh, some pulsing going on inside that, uh, that long lead, so we're not gonna do that. Anyway, so you have battery lead, relay lead, sensor lead on the passenger side of the car. This other stuff here, that's all the engine harness that I made up in order to make the, the alternator work. Uh, I won't be doing it. I mean, I'll just use the existing wire harness. It's completely separate. It doesn't have anything to do with EFI, so I won't, have, I won't even use any of this. You know, I won't have to wire this up. It's already in the car. That's fine. Uh, the only other existing wiring that I'll have to fool with is for the distributor. I mean, I'm sorry, for the coil. The coil is fired by this lead here, this white, yellow uh, lead. It goes to this little module here, which will be mounted right by the coil. Okay, it's a real simple hookup. One wire goes to the module, the module is grounded, and the other side of the module goes to the negative lead of the, of the ignition coil. So what I'll end up doing is using these existing ignition coil, I will disconnect I will leave the wires hooked up to the negative side because that also drives a tachometer on the car, and I'll add this blue lead to it. The plus side of the distributor comes from the uh, engine harness that I'm not replacing. Okay, it's the same one that controls the uh, the oil pump, uh, oil pressure, the starter, all the other kind of stuff. So there's a the harness that wraps around and goes to the other side. So that one will be left alone. So really, the only thing you needed from the New system was a was a, a signal to drive this guy here to ground to ground out the coil. So single wire. So you have one wire going up towards the ignition coil. You'll have what you'll have one wire going across the engine to that other side I just showed you. And on the inside of the car, you'll have one wire going up to the existing plug on the dash. And of course, your main lead going to your computer. So it's all pretty simple. Uh, the exterior parts of it, well, the only thing I have to worry about mounting is this, uh, which is basically an idle air control valve. Um, I'll need to fabricate some kind of a mount for this. And the biggest consternation I've had is this airflow meter. Um, I'm planning on using the existing stock intake pipe, which is a rubber pipe. It, I'm using that because I know it'll clear the compressor for the air conditioning and everything should work there. This space will be open once I eliminate the perch that the existing airflow meter sits on. That'll have to be taken out. That'll be deleted. I've got this fancy homegrown S tube that takes the input from, uh, from the airflow meter, takes it and it comes out in front, basically the same place where the, uh, the current um, air filter fits. So hopefully this, this should fit the stock air filter. Now the only issue I have is there's no physical support of the actual airflow meter at this point in time. It's just being hung off the front by this guy and hung off the back by this guy. And that's not really a good setup. There is mounting provisions for this thing uh, I can't remember where they are. Oh, I think they're on, on the back. Well, anyway, I'm going to have to build some kind of a bracket bracketry to work with this. I thought it was on the bottom, but maybe I'm missing something. Um, there'll be some kind of bracket. I mean, I probably could get away with it just being supported by this hose clamp on this rubber tube and this hose clamp on this plastic tube, but that's really... You know, I, I, I wouldn't consider that a factory-like fix because... 
this thing hanging out in free space, I mean, eventually vibration would get to it. It's just not a, not a good idea. So I have the space for it if I remove that perch, but I'm going to have to fabricate my a new perch that will mount this, basically in this location. So that's it. Uh, that's the plan. Uh, I, like I said, I've simplified the wiring harness by... I only did uh, really a couple modifications. I had to cut two wires on the harness off one of those pigtails. One of the wires went to the, uh, to the ignition coil trigger, and I can't remember what the other one went to. But I, my intent on the harness itself was to do as few modifications to it as possible. Okay, so it's pretty much completely intact except for two easily reversible cut wires into this plug right here. Okay, that plug there had two wires I had to use. Of that, and that plug, they only, they only needed two wires for the current setup, in other words. So I cut those, add the wires as needed, and the only other modifications I did was to eliminate some of the hookup to this thing, which was the fuse links box, okay? It was just a little overkill, and it also had fuse links for parts that were non-EFI related. So, yeah, you know, I'd, I'd only be using a piece of it anyway, and I didn't have the top that fit on it, and, I didn't really want to waste the real estate or something like that. That's why I went to the three individual fuse links down here. Okay, so that box was replaced by these three connections right here, which I thought was a lot cleaner. Anyway, so let's see how she runs. Should just start right up. Oh, let me hook up the ground first. I can start off that hooked up. Okay, and we should hear the pump run. Good. And there you go. Perfect. Like I said, this idle air control, which is hanging free now, it's supposed to be tied up with this. I don't know what happened here. Hold on. I'm going to fix this. Uh, oh, next part of it. Okay, now that we got that part working, the next process is going to be I've got this umbilical cord built out. Well, partially built. I have to push the other termination on it. And what I'm going to, what this will do, will allow me to plug this, okay, into uh, the engine, into this one right here. That'll plug into there, and then the other side of this will plug into the car. And this will give me enough room that I can literally plug this into my car and hang this umbilical out and plug it in, in, into here. Uh, I will then disconnect the computer that's installed in the car right now. I will disconnect the spark module in the car right now to get all the electronics disconnected. So the only thing I'm using is that one four pin connector, uh, sorry, six pin connector that only has four wires. It's one six pin connector that resides underneath the, the steering wheel through the umbilical cord to this setup. I'll take some jumper leads and I'll connect the battery this battery to that battery. That will get my grounds and pauses all hooked up. Um, I'll have to get a... I'll have to make a jumper lead to take me from the positive side of the coil to the positive side of that coil. Because again, that's where the ignition, the hot side of the coil comes from. It, the, the hot side of this coil will then be fed by this, by the car's engine harness. All right. So the car's engine harness will support the coil positive, those, that six pin connector. Um, that's all I need for starting, really. Uh, and I'll probably end up, oh, and, and the reason I want to take the, uh, and I'll also connect up the, the negative lead that would typically plug into the coil here, 
to this negatively because I want to see the tachometer work as well. So that coil will be connected to the same connections on that with the coil out of the circuit. I don't want to fire that coil off. And that way you'll get the negative lead off that coil for, to drive the tack from this sense. The positive lead from that coil gives this coil the positive it needs to fire in the first place. Uh, and the only other thing I want to do is I'm going to install the oil sense sending unit, the electrical one, off of that car. Oh, actually, I'll just, I'll just screw one in there and take that lead and put a jumper to it. And I'll take the, um, I'll take that, that car's uh, temperature gauge and plug it in to right in here. We have a temperature gauge sending unit right there. Okay. The idea here is I want to be able to use that car's ignition to start the car, to verify everything's going to work like I'm saying it's going to work. And once it starts, I should be able to see the oil pressure. I should be able to see the water temperature, and I should be able to see the RPM. If that all works, then I'll be, I'll be, oh, oh, I'm sorry, last thing I have to do is I have to hook up these, these uh, fuel lines to that fuel line from the pump, because the idea is that once I do all this, the pump in the car will be running, so it'll be pumping fuel here. I'm not going to be using any of this other harness at all. It's just these ones I've been talking about. So, the... Turning on this, that ignition energizes this ECU. This ECU talks to the pump through that connector back into the car, turns on the fuel pump, and the fuel will then come out of those lines and feed this engine. Like I said, I know it may be kind of wordy the way I'm saying it, but when I, my next step in the next few days, I plan to make all that happen, and what we'll do is we'll have this engine setting right over here beside this car. I'll be sitting in there. I'll start it. It'll run with its own gas supply. It'll get its own, it'll show the temperature, it'll show the oil pressure, and it'll show the RPM. Once I'm done with that, I'll feel completely happy with all my wiring setup. It's really pretty simple. I mean, it's actually this, the funny thing is that harness actually is a little bit easier to deal with than that one for a lot of reasons, but it, it is once you figure out what's going on. Anyway, that's it. Uh, the only other thing I have going is I got another... I, I found one of these on eBay, so I picked up an extra one of these on eBay. Because this looks like a pretty hard to replace thing. So, <laughs> I don't want to lose my idle air control. So, I'll be plugging in a new one, a one off the eBay and see, make sure it works. You know, I want to test it, obviously. Um, if it works, I'll have, a spare, I'll have a spare idle air control. I have a spare ECU. I have a spare computer which pretty much covers the more difficult to replace parts on this particular car. I also have a spare distributor. I think I already mentioned that. Uh, so that's the thing, you know, when you have these old cars, you need to have spare parts. But that's it for now. Uh, like I said, the, the next video will be the umbilical cords and me sitting in that car, turning the engine and cranking this engine over with it outside the car. And then the only thing left to do would obviously be to uh, do a to swap out the engine itself, put the clutch on it, and put the clutch. Oh, the other thing is probably the most difficult part is I have to figure out the exhaust. Um, I don't know how this will land in the car. I don't know where that's going to terminate in the car. I mean, it would be really nice if I could just take this uh, piece of pipe and just go right on out the bottom, of the bottom of the car, right back to a, a muffler. I, mean, I know it's not going to be that simple, but. I don't, I don't know where this lands. That's the thing. It's too hard for me to get under the car and try it. I guess I could take some measurements and see where it's coming off of. I mean, I could probably measure from the bottom of the bell housing. It's basically where this top is. And then it goes down about, you know, give yourself about three inches of clearance. So, you know, I might be able to figure that out ahead of time, see what I'm going to run into. Worst case scenario is I have a whole nother pipe pre-bent that I bought from a vendor that's it designs a pipe fitting that goes with that turbo bends and the idea is it snakes around and it actually takes out right back where the existing pipe in the car lands. So I could just take the easy route and use that thing. I think the only reason I didn't want to do that was uh, that pipe did not have the EGR uh, bung on it. And so if I go with that route, I'll have to make sure I plug off that EGR. I don't really like doing that. I like keeping things stocked, but... 
you know, there's only so much you can do. And I think this EGR actually somehow has worked off of this control thing we're talking about right down here. I don't know what it does, but it's there. Well, anyway, that's all for now, folks. I just want to give you an update and show the uh, new and improved cleaned up engine harness, which is, again, it's the main one because all the injectors.